sila kapag yung... mic test. Ayan, I was nagkamali ako. I forgot the mic. Okay. Uh, magandang tanghali. Ako po si Trixie Cruz Angeles and this is Luminous uh, on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Uh, part of the reason for this live is for us to engage in more nuanced discussion. Huwag tayo yung masyadong simplistic. Galit tayo dun sa ginawa ng UP Student Council. Abolish na yung UP. <laughs> Ganon. Um, it's it's too simple. It's too ano yung mga tipong uh, death to all communists is not a good statement. It is in fact inciting to violence. So we also don't want to do that. Para una una we hold the majority. So hindi kailangan tayo masyadong hysterical sa mga responses natin. Uh, if you will notice nga po, di ba yung 91% popularity rating ng ating pangulo is making people think, what? Wait, what happened? Diba? <laughs> may may ganun eh. Um, that's why we shouldn't be too worried about whose opinion talaga yung nananaig dito. So, let, let's begin uh, uh, a discussion dito on how do we deal with the communist insurgency. Una kilalanin natin, which is the one that is illegal. Ang illegal po ang MPA. Pero, katulad ng kapagyera, Pagka merong dalawang bansa na magkaaway, kunwari tayo during World War II, ang mag-collaborate dun sa kalaban ay dapat kalaban din. And in fact, kung military ka halimbawa at sumanib ka dun sa kalaban natin, ang ano yun, instant, death penalty yun. Okay? So sa atin, hindi ganun kasimple. Because what we are doing is we are engaged in a discourse o usapan o debate sa ating mga sariling kababayan. Hindi ganun kadali maghatol ng kamatayan para sa mga, ano, just because we disagree sa so, ating mga kababayan, just because we disagree. Now, again, ano yung uh, illegal? The NPA is illegal. Kahit wala pa yung anti-terrorism law, illegal na sila. Okay? Bakit? They are rebels. They are waging a rebellion. Doon sa ating revised penal code na kalagay, the raising of arms against the duly constituted authority, yan po ay rebellion at punishable na. Ito po yung maganda. Sabi ng Court Suprema, ang act of rebellion, tuloy-tuloy yan. So if at some point you raised arms against the duly constituted authorities, bali lumaban ka sa gobyerno, at one time naging NPA ka, pero hindi ka naman umalis doon sa pagka-NPA, kahit kunwari mahuli, mahuli ka somewhere, nasa safe house ka, natutulog ka, wala ka namang hawak na baril, di ka naman nakikipagbarilan, tulog ka lang, you're still in the act of committing rebellion. Ah, ang galing ng Korte Suprema natin, ha? O. Oh. So yan, maliwanag, ang NPA, illegal yan. What about the CPP and NDF? Ang mga ito, once they chose to use violent means as a, a, a means for char... Uh, changing the administration, they are now illegal. Kasi nga, they agree to the use of armed force to overthrow the government. Ergo, rebellion pa rin. Okay. Ngayon, di ba pagkagyera, aiding and abetting and giving material aid to the enemy is considered also part of the, ano, bali, uh, enemy ka na rin. Paano dito sa rebellion? Giving material aid ba is also rebellion? Hindi, pero pwedeng conspiracy to commit rebellion. Or pwede kang accessory. Kunwari, itong taong to, may pinatay as an act of rebellion, may pinatay siya. Let's say may pinatay siyang sundalo, nagtago. Ikaw ang nagtago. Accessory to the crime ka kasi pinatago mo yung tao. Piniprevent mo yung arrest ng tao. Okay? So, those who help hide yung mga fugitives, dun sa mga nagko-conspire. Kahit hindi sila mismo ang nagdala ng barel, pero tumulong sila by giving what we call indispensable cooperation, etc. Pwede in conspiracy sila o uh, accomplices sila o accessories to the crime. O de illegal din. Yan po ang sinasabi ng, ano, ng AFP. 
hindi po sila nagre-red tag na merely, o oh, yan, yung dalawang yan, magkaibigan, yung isa komunista, yung isa hindi. Komunista na rin yung hindi. Okay? So, yung mga ganyan, that is now uh, what, we, what we have to distinguish. Okay? Kaya nga sinasabi natin, ah, red tagging ba gusto ninyo? No, sige, pero yung ginawa ng AFP, hindi yan red tagging. Ngayon, yung sinasabi ninyong red tagging, hindi rin yan red tagging, trash talking lang yan. At pwede kami mag-trash talking. Diba? Bahagi yan ng cover coverage ng freedom of speech yung trash talking na yan. Pag sinabi ko you're a dirty communist, yung dirty part lang talaga niyan. Yung that's not even libel. At lalo-lalo na kung komunista ka. Unless you consider communism a crime, a vice, or a defect. Diba? So yung mga ganyan. We have to be, uh, to understand the differences. Bakit kailangan natin gawin ito? Para alam natin kapag uh, mali na yung ginagawa natin. Diba? Kaya nga sinasabi natin, magaling si General Parlade kasi he didn't really red tag. He didn't really uh, accuse anybody of a crime, therefore walang libel. Kaya lang, may ibang mga tao, they have to spin it para matigil na ito. At dito na pumapasok yung tinatawag natin na propaganda wars. Okay. So ano pa? So ano yung illegal? Illegal ang NPA. Pag tinawag mong komunista yung tao, hindi yan crime and therefore it is not liable to call a person a communist. Bakit tayo kailangan mag-ulit-ulit ng ganito? Kasi minsan, sinasabi natin, Hi Eric, hi Jen. Uh, minsan, sinasabi ng iba, Ayan, komunista yan, kailangan arestuhin. No, wait, that's not a crime. Okay. Ngayon, ano yung kinatak kinatatakot ng kabilang parlor? Yung kabilang parlor, natatakot sila na baka maungkat yung sabwatan nila with the communist, and with the underground insurgency, with the NPA. Okay, NPA ang bawal, ha? So, yung, at saka si PPNDF. Pero, kunwari, Gabriela is not a terror organization, it's not a terrorist organization. Pero, kung may patunay tayo na nakikipagsabuatan sila with the communist insurgency, i.e. tinatago, kaya mahalaga, and this is where you have to look at General Parlade's statements very, very carefully. Nung sinabi niya na this Kaela person, whoever that is, whether kapatid nga siya ni, ni Madam Angel o hindi, itong si Kaela was an insurgent tapos nagtago o binigyan ng aid or comfort or tinulungan ng Gabriela. Okay? Bakit mahalaga yon? Hindi para i-establish na Gabriela is a terrorist organization, pero para ma-establish yung sabwatan. Okay? Kasi yung sabwatan is what will make that act of giving aid and comfort illegal. Okay? Importante yung mga ganitong differences para hindi tayo natatalo ng kabila dun sa mga diskusyon. Or they don't go to some foreign forum sabihin po nila na itong mga to, ano na to, it's a witch hunt. Kasi para sa kanila, basta komunista kailangan i-aresto. Of course not. We're not doing that. And nobody's saying that. Not General Parlade, not the AFP, not the Duterte administration, not even Duterte himself. And not us. We should not also do that. We're not asking to jail all the communists. We jail all the communists who have engaged in criminal acts. For that matter, we jail every person who engages in a criminal act. Okay? So, yun yun. Yun yun. Para ano, para maliwanag. Okay, ngayon, tawid tayo dun sa issue ng UP. Kasi andun ako kahapon. So, I'm not speaking... From, ano, from the perch of a commentarista looking at it from the outside. Diyante ako ng UP, kaya hindi wala ko. Uh, kaya ako pinapasok. <laughs> hindi pinapasok yung mga rallyista, pero dito hindi clear kung merong permit o wala. Kung walang permit, then it was simply a matter of admin, administrative exclusion. Dapat nag-coordinate, dapat binigi, ano, nag humingi ng permit, nag-apply ng permit. Ganun. Kung may permit at in-exclude sila, it had to be on certain grounds at kailangan may due process dyan. Ngayon, ang alam natin, hiningi ng UP Student Council na hindi sila payagan sa loob. Alam mo, ang konti lang sa totoo lang. Um, ang konti lang nang dumating kasi maraming venues. So, ang dumating sa UP, siguro mga 30, mga 40, o 50, mga ganon. Okay? So, kasama na ako doon. So, uh, instead of going straight to the oblation, doon sa kanto na lang, 
ng CP Garcia at saka University Avenue dun sa sulok ng isang lugar sa kanto uh, underneath the ano the poster that says you're not welcome in UP doon po nag-conduct ng seremonya si mga parents okay? at beside dun sa you're not welcome in UP tarpaulin sinabit ng mga parents at ni ni Kape Peton Goitia yung banner ng mga parents na wag naman sayangin ang buhay ng mga aktivista. And this is what I wanted to point out. Ganito po ang diskurso na, na kumbaga, si Kape Peton dito, class act. Kasi, hindi niya tinanggal yung nakalagay na you're not welcome here. Itinabi niya. Kasi, sa totoo lang, whether it is on the internet or on our streets, the space should be equal opportunity for all different opinions. Public space yan, and public space should be made available to any member of the public. Kahit ano pa, ano-ano pa ang ating opinion. O ba? Diba, ito yung maganda dyan eh. ba diba, nag-rally dyan yung mga dilaw. Nag-rally dyan yung mga pula. Nag-rally dyan lahat ng mga anti-Duterte. But they could not, the UP Student Council did not give us a reason kung bakit ayaw nila dun sa mga pro-Duterte. Except, ang sinasabi nila, ay eh, instrumento ng militaryan at bawal ang military sa loob ng UP. That's really a flimsy and a borderline idiotic excuse. I said borderline, ha? Bakit? Unang-una, kailangan patunayan mo yan. ba? Diba? You're asking us to be excluded, or actually the parents, kasi meron lang ako doon. You're asking the parents to not be, you're asking the UP uh, chancellor, the UP system to exclude these people because you do not agree with them and you suspect them to be instruments of the military. Diba? May weird dyan. Maliwanag dito is may kinatatakutan sila. At ano yung katatakutan naman nila? Unang-una, wala pang pasok. Last day po ng enrollment ngayon. So, hindi pa po nagkaklase ang mga estudyante. At kung nagkaklase man, eh online naman. So, anong mangyayari? Ma ano, mahahawa sila sa hangin? It was just pettiness what it comes down to. Di sila sang ayon and therefore, huwag kayo dito. Ganon? Eh, it doesn't work that way for public spaces. Kasi hindi lang po sila uh, or tayo, or tayo, or anybody, there's no exclusive right to the freedom of information. ba? And there's no exclusive right to the right to uh, the freedom of association or the freedom to petition for redress of grievances, which is what a rally is. <laughs> so, on the other hand, ayoko naman din na sinasabi natin, sunugi na natin ang UP. Or ano, pasara na natin ang UP. Or, yung mga gano'n, na huwag natin papasukin yung mga anak natin sa UP. Oh, contraire. Ako, I continue to go to UP even if I hold opinions different from all of my other classmates or many of my other classmates or some of my other classmates kasi hindi naman din homogenous ang opinion sa loob ng UP. Ang impression na kaliwa ang UP comes from several things. One, it's the nationalist policy of UP and UP's curriculum. Nasa, ano yan, nasa rules yan ng UP itself at saka sa charter ng UP is that ang dapat itinuturo sa amin, and this was at the time kasi when nationalism was unheard of, talaga mental colony ang Pilipinas noon. So, ang ginawa ng UP, para hindi naman tayong masyadong pro-kano, ba or pro-anything foreign, ginawang nationalistic yung ano yung curriculum and yung education natin. In other words, uunahin, kailangan inaaral yung Philippine history, language, ano, and yung pag-aaral, let's say, ng psychology or any of the other sciences should have a bent towards nationalism. Oh, hindi masama yun. Unfortunately, what it leads to sometimes is a bias for activism, for leftist activism. I'm not saying that happens all the time, pero may bias sa ganun. Diba? I mean, that's what happens because the professors encourage it and the curriculum is towards Philippine first. Okay lang. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's an objective policy. Okay? Walang, walang problema sa ganyan. Pero, ang nai-encourage is a bias for anything anti-administration. 
okay lang kung anti-administration ka, kung may basis ka. Halimbawa, anti-administration ako in the sense that I don't like Duque. Diba? Understandable yon. But it doesn't mean I don't like the government or I don't like the president. It means that there are some things that I need, I want to correct with government. And that's also activism. Gusto kong baguhin yung health secretary. Gusto kong baguhin yung implementasyon ng RA11332 o yung ano, itong sa pandemic natin. Yung mga ganyan. Uh, so, that doesn't mean that, kumbaga, activism is objective. It happens to, you're an activist for cultural heritage, you can be an activist for people's health, pero you can be an activist also for the, the change in systems. So, yung mga gustong magganap, yung federal parliamentary, activism din po yung ginagawa natin kapag nag-advocate tayo for a change of system. In short, an activist is somebody who wants to change things for the better. So, uh, what else do we need to ano, to be more nuanced in? Ito yung, itong mga UP students, I'm not against the UP Student Council per se. I'm against this stupidity of excluding parents from, from, from being there on the UP grounds so that sila naman ang madinig. Diba? Because it's very rare that we hear this side of the story. Hindi ba yun ang kinanakit natin dun sa kwenta na taon ng yellow narrative? Hindi tayo pinakinggan at puro storya lang nila yung iniimpose sa atin. Parang, parang naging, ano, they established a new set of values. Halimbawa, dun sa values na yun, pagka maka-Marcos ka, masama kang tao. Diba? Kapag objective ka about the Marcoses, masama kang tao. Kailangan galit ka sa mga Marcoses. Which is stupid. So, uh, the, the, we don't want to replicate their stupidity on the other end. We want to be more intelligent sa pagsasagot sa kanila. So, itong UP Student Council, my challenge to you is, substantiate what you are saying. How are the parents instruments of the military? And necessarily, if the military sympathizes with the parents, is that inherently wrong? Diba? Uh, Hindi yung buong AFP establishment yung tinatawag din yung beldugo o pumapatay ng mga activists slash rebels, etc. Hindi kasi sila nuanced. Yun yung problema sa kanila. And we don't also want to be like them. Para sa kanila, AFP yan, therefore beldugo, therefore corrupt, therefore uh, tuta ni Duterte. Ganyan. Pagka ganyan ka na mag-isip and there is no room for discourse, no room for evidence that says otherwise, then that's the road to stupidity. That's the road to kamangmangan. Yung inability natin to accept new evidence and then change our views in accordance with that. So, ganun ang nangyayari sa kanila. And you know what the ironic thing is? Eh, yun ang sa nila sa atin. Di ba? DDS equals tanga. Kung pro Duterte ka, tanga ka. Di ba? Isn't that, ano, isn't that uh, some kind of racism? Some kind of, ano, discrimination? Yeah. So, we don't want to be like that. So, kaya nga, di ba, kahit mahal na mahal na mahal na mahal natin itong Pangulong to, and we believe that he's very, very good for the country, he will sometimes make mistakes. And when he makes mistakes, so naman, Mr. President naman, duke pa din. Mga ganon. Mr. President naman, hampasin niya naman yung mga tao sa si LTFRB. Talaga, gusto nila ng, ano, ng lisensya para sa mga nagsuscooter. Yan, yung mga ganyan. Diba? So, yun ang dapat natin uh, tinitignan. We don't want to be like them. Okay? At saka, ano ah, kasi sabi ni Jen, 91% tanga, hindi kasi sa dami yan eh. Kasi kung marami, pwede namang maraming tanga eh. Lalong-lalo na that's what they tried to do to us. Diba? Yung Ano, tayong manghampas lupa, yung public school system, hindi inayos, maging noy-noy man, maging ramos man, maging kori man. Wala, hindi nila pinondohan, hindi inayos ang curriculum, hindi professionalize yung mga teachers natin. What was that purpose? To keep us stupid and ignorant. And that's, that means that's a lot of us kept stupid and ignorant in 30 years. They wanted that because it's, it, pwede tayong lokohin. 
So, just because marami tayo doesn't always mean that we're right. But in this case, we're right because we have evidence that we're right. Diba? So, uh, y- yung mga ganun, we have to be very, very careful about yung mga absolutes na black and white. Sila kasi, para sa kanila, absolutes yung black and white. Sila lang ang magaling, sila lang ang matalino. Tayo, dahil hindi tayo sumasang-ayon sa kanila, tanga tayo. Well, we don't also want to do that. Hindi komot, hindi sila sumasang-ayon sa atin, tanga sila. But they can be wrong. Diba? And they are wrong here in excluding another's opinion. Paano ka matututo kung ayaw mong makinig? Paano ka matututo kung hindi mo inaaral yung mga nag-o-oppose dun sa idea na hawak mo? Diba? Paano ka matututo, paano ka gagaling kung yung buta sa argumento mo ayaw mong tignan? Hmm? Paano ka gagaling kung hindi natin itutuwid yung dapat tinutuwid natin kahit tayo yung mali? <laughs> We don't want to be jingoistic. Meaning, yung tayo lang yung tama. Walang, <laughs> walang ibang tama tayo lang. That's not true. And then, eh, no matter how intelligent our members are or, or, or yung mga kapanalig natin, kahit gaano katatalino, nagkakamali din. So, but we can minimize yung pagkakamali by listening to each other and listening to each other's argument and listening din doon sa kabila. Kasi once we shut out their arguments, once we do not take this into consideration, that is the road to stupidity. Okay? Hindi na tayo babalik sa ganun sa panahon na basta na lang natin tinatanggap yung sinasabi ng administrasyon. But we want to be wiser and more knowledgeable. So, yung ano, that's why in this instance, in this particular issue, dun sa pagrarally or pagka-congregate ng mga parents, I think that the UP Student Council here was wrong. And they continue to be wrong if they're going to continue to do this. It's important to listen even to their enemies para alam natin kung ano yung dudrogin natin argumento. <laughs> diba? Um, ano pa? Yung mga, uh, y- 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 ano, we, we, we need to be more circumspect dun sa mga, ano, sa mga opinions. Halimbawa, tanga lahat ng mga UP, UP students, alam nyo, yung ano, nation building is also, and what, what politics is, is yung capability natin kumuha ng kakampi. ba diba? Politics is addition. Kaya nga, minsan di natin maintindihan yung mga decision ng mga kongresista natin kasi sumasang-ayon sila dun sa ilang mga kongresista kasi kailangan nila lang kakampi para maipasa yung sarili nilang mga bills. Okay? So tayo, marami tayo, 91%, di ba? Pero, pero, we also need to protect the president. And one way of protecting him is by engaging in the discourse and defeating their arguments. Okay, that's one. And I noticed that many of us The, ano, many of uh, those pro-Duterte people on social media, they're very good at this. Magaling talaga. Pero we can't stop there. Hindi komot konti sila, hindi na natin sila susuyuin na, you know, you really have to want to see things our way also. Kailangan minsan-minsan, alam natin kung kailan tayo pwedeng manuyo. Hindi lahat ng times, gera. Kasi, like we said, Panalo tayo dahil mana, mana, mala, marami tayo. Mas panalo pag maparami pa natin yung mga kapanalig natin. ba? Diba? Uh, sabi ni Del Lapasen, for those students who are rallying for freedom of expression tapos biglang super threatened when another group is voicing out on their own, anyari. O yan, that's an incredibly uh, uh, a nuanced and an excellent way of engaging in discourse. Walang ano, walang insultuhan, hindi natin tinatawag na tanga yung mga estudyante kasi hindi naman din sila talaga tanga. They're just close-minded. And we need to be able to point them out para nakita din nila where they are dangerously close to advocating for stupidity. ba diba? So, sometimes laban, sometimes suyo. Ganyan din po ang ating politika. Hindi kasi parating gera. Bakit? Bakit may sometimes suyo? Okay. This is where the ano the insurgency comes in. Bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng mga rebelde? Bakit na ano na, na nahihikayat yung mga bata? 
well at that age idealistic so it's very very easy to appeal to that sense of idealism to the sense that these kids have at some point in their life they feel invincible diba alam niyo nandun sila sa age na mas marunong pa sila kaysa sa magulang nila sometimes that's right but sometimes that's also not true kasi they don't have enough experience with the world to understand many of its workings so that that you don't read in the books, di ba? <laughs> so, and then, Santa, ang paggagawin ng kabila is they will make you feel. Take note of this, ha? They will make you feel na napag-iwanan ka na. Hindi ka, ano, hindi ka belong. Ayan. Ay, kuwawa ka naman. Hindi ka belong. Ostracized ka. Dito ka sa amin. Dito belong ka. Dito kapatid ka. Dito kapanalig ka. Kaanib ka namin. Kakampi ka namin. Kakosa ka. You are one with us. Oo, oh, ba? Suddenly, may grupo na sila. Suddenly, may barkada na. Suddenly, feeling sila empowered kasi may kakampi sila. And willing na silang makinig dito sa mga to. Ah, ganun ba? Masama pala yung ano, gobyerno. Ha, talaga? Inaapi tayo? And believe me, I know this because I was one of those stupid students at one point in my life or, or another. Hindi lang ako pwede sumali kasi yung tatay ko nasa military and that would have been hell to pay, di ba? But my father did not stop me, ah. You learn from your mistakes. Huwag kang tatanga-tanga. Uh, sabi ni uh, Mark Aaron Solivia, just in case na may encounter na taong gumagamit ng memes on argument, how would I approach him po? Don't engage a meme! <laughs> That's not an argument. The meme is actually not for purposes of debate with you. Unless meron ka talagang counter argument for that. Ang purpose ng meme is to appeal to the people who don't want to do additional thinking. Shortcut yung meme. There's a visual, tapos even yung logic, pag tinignan mo, very, very simplistic. It disregards other factors. Okay? So, halimbawa, yung anong tawag mo sa ganyan? Di tanga. Parang, parang ganun lang kasimple. You don't engage with a meme. And if a person uses a meme, it means he is incapable of conducting the discourse. Okay? Pagka ganun, talo na siya. Sabihin mo, if that is all you have, if a meme is your means, of trying to engage in discourse, then clearly you already have lost. Huwag nyo na pong i-engage. Masasayang lang po yung hininga natin. Ito sabi ni Solajes Ed, hindi nga dapat laging gera. May time na kung paano mo kakalmahin yung kalaban, kalaban natin na dapat nilang malaman o matutunan. Correct. So dapat din, yung arsenal natin, kumbaga, yung bala natin o yung mga armas natin, iba-iba. Minsan, yung armas natin is sarcasm. Di ba? Yung mga tipong, ah, sige, huwag kayo dito ha, kasi yung mga tanga doon sa kabilang side, doon na lang kayo. Mga ganyan. Minsan, there is a time for that, and there is also a time na dapat impormasyon ang nilalabas natin. Hindi sila sa sangayon kaagad, kasi aaminin nila na talo sila. But we get the information out there, because at some point, they will have to think about it. Di ba? It will have to be there, and they will have to answer it. And then, pag mag-isa na sila, iisipin nila, teka muna, kasama yon. Kahit ayaw pa nila magbago ng isip, somewhere down the road, they will have to acknowledge the argument that destroys their entire belief system. Natanong ni Reynaldo Monte Ucat, have you successfully converted anyone to our side? Yes, but I refuse to name names. Bakit? Kasi as far as the other side understands, eh, kapanalig pa rin nila. It's not, ano rin, hindi natin i-out yung mga taong closet BBS, di ba? Okay, ito. Sabi ni Romel, manipol mo nga yun. Meron akong kakilala from UP na sinasabing mas gugustuhin pa niya at okay na walang development ang economy ng PHI under kay Lugaw Lenny if she becomes president kaysa kay President Duterte or even Marcos. Why are you going to engage that kind of thinking? Why are you, that's not even an argument. That's just a preference. So do we really need to change that person's mind? Kailangan pa natin bugbugin yung tao na yan? Hindi rin. Hindi rin. <laughs> By the way, ha? There are some people who are terminally, for lack of a better term, terminally stupid. 
You also do not try to engage those people because it's useless. But what we do is just keeping our ideas, our ideas out there, putting them out there. We have to keep them out there because that's also another way of conducting the discourse. Ilalagay ko tong impormasyon na ito. Basahin mo, agree ka man o hindi, basahin mo, importante yan. Kung hindi ka naniniwala ngayon, dahil meron pang ano, meron pang part of you that refuses to acknowledge your mistake or refuses to acknowledge that you're only partially correct, at some point later on, you will understand that. Tignan nyo, and, and this one, maraming examples of this. Yung mga dating aktivista who are now productive members of society, yung mga dating na mundok at bumaba na dito, bakit sila umaalis? Most of the time, umaalis sila kasi hindi na rin sila naniniwala. Sira na yung buhay nila. They have no other future but sure na kamatayan if they stay where they are. Lalong-lalo na pag hindi na sila naniniwala dun sa cause. Okay? Sabi ni Amor Lekasa, I start with my teenager kids. I let them listen to your tambayan and explain to them with law and stats because numbers do not lie. Oh, well, yeah. It's not true always that numbers do not lie. Ha? Unless they, they're, you know, it's article number so and so of the family code or something like that. Um, ano yung sabi na yun? There's a saying that says there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Kasi the interpretation of those numbers can be lies. Okay, so we also have to be very, very careful. What I'm saying here is that um, there are many ways to approach the problem. At ito yung mahalagang lesson na binibigay ni General Parlade sa atin. Dati, ang AFP, barilan lang dun sa, ano, sa gubat, diba? sa bundok, sa bukid, yan, barilan lang. Pero alam nila, alam nila na parang ano lang eh, parang conveyor belt lang ang NPA. Pag napatay na yung mga mga combatants nila, recruit for more, recruit lang ng recruit. It's, it's a conveyor belt sa kamatayan. Dinadala lang nila sa kamatayan itong mga batang to. Recruiting for them to die out there. ba diba? Para hindi matatanda yung mga matagal na dyan, hindi na sila makikipagbarilan, hindi sila mamamatay. So mag-recruit nila ng mga tagasalo ng bala. And as long as they are idealistic kids, it doesn't necessarily really have to be part of it. Sino ibang nare-recruit? 12 years old, 14 years old. Hindi, wala na sa school yan. Sa edad na yan. Or sa, ano yan, sa, sa gullibility na ng bata yan. Diba? And, and let's face it, youth can be very, very gullible. <laughs> so, uh, it will be dangerous, dangerous for us to stereotype schools then. The same University of the Philippines that gives us all of these activists na namumundok, it also gave us Ferdinand Marcos. Okay? Also, I me, by the way. <laughs> Pero awayin siya. Diba? It also gave us Juan Ponce Enrile. <laughs> okay? The Ateneo, of course, gave us Jose Rizal. But it also gave us Nino Aquino. Diba? The party list system. It gives us all the Makabayan block. But it also gave us Sudante Marcoleta and, ano, and uh, Mike Defensor. Yeah. <laughs> And then somewhere in the middle is ano, Congressman Lito Atienza. <laughs> oh, ayan na naman ha, yung mga nagre-reklamo na naman sa audio ko. Hindi po audio ko yung problema. I have done everything on this end. Okay. Uh, unless bibigyan niyo ako ng bagong mic ha, wala na akong magagawa on this end. Lakasan na lang natin yung volume. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Sabi ni Genevieve Gumban del Castillo, kung ang presidente nga gusto nakipag-usap dahil alam niya hindi ito masusolusyonan ng awayan, kaya welcome pa rin sa kanya makipag-usap sa mga rebelde. Precisely, kung masyado tayong dogmatic na patayin lahat ng mga komunista yung ating stand, uh, we're making too many enemies. In, ano na, minimize natin. Sino ba talaga yung mga kalaban natin? Abat, puntiryahin natin yung mga leaders nila. di ba? Punta natin yung mga taong nagre-recruit ng kabataan natin. Punta natin yung mga ano, pabanjing bali pawardi-wardi na hindi pinoprotektahan ng ating mga estudyante. Okay? Uh, also, 
Uh, I, I was a little worried, pero nakikita ko sa comments, hindi naman totoo yan sa majority sa inyo. Halimbawa, meron ako mga nakikita, and it really disturbs me, dun sa mga ano, kasi kayo masyado kayong magagaling. Let's not demonize intellectualism just because galit tayo sa, ano, sa ibang mga taga-UP. Ha? Taga-UP din ako. Um, there's nothing wrong with being intelligent. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with ano, yung mga, ano, yung mga parang kanina, di ba, sa karambola dinidiscuss ni Congre ni Congressman, ni, ni Conrad Banal, na sabi ni Boss Conrad, hindi naman sagot yung ano, pagka may nahuling corruption sa isang agency, tatanggalin mo na kagad yung funding ng entire agency na yun. O sige, kunwari, may corruption sa BIR, defund the BIR, edi eh, sinong mangungulekta ng taxes natin, edi eh, wala. Diba? We have to make sure na yung reaction natin doesn't make things worse. Diba? And we should always be encouraged to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning more. Uh, we, sh we, we listen to their side and then learn more about our side. And let's see where there's some things that we can agree on. Diba? Halimbawa, I think we all agree even with, the, you know, with some of the other side. Na kailangan palitan si Duque. <laughs> diba? Oh, that's a point of, ano, that's a common ground, <laughs> di ba? Yung, ano, ayaw natin itong si Duke. Oh, sige, marami naman tayo magkakasangayon sa ganyan. Ah. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Gian, sabi ni Sas, malakas daw yung propaganda ng CTP, NTA, NDF, kasi daw, uh, imperfect N sila. Ano yung perfect N? Um... Ganito, uh, I usually I agree with Sasson on on about 90% of what she says. This is these are some uh baka iniisip ninyo masama yung audio ko kasi naririnig niyo yung pressure cooker. Oo, may niluluto kami. Um ang she's correct. Magaling talaga ang propaganda ng kabila. Uh, you know why? They know their enemies. They know their propaganda material very well. Aral sila. Kasi yun nga yung ginagawa nila. Di ba? May mga sit-in, sit-in classes, yung mga ganyan. Mga uh, awareness racing activities. May mga ganyan sila. Bahagi ng kanilang activities yan. At sa ulado nila, yung mga doktrina nila, yung mga ganyan. Sa pagka in-engage ka, kunwari, on ideology, ay, ang tatatas, magaling kung tutuusin sa galing. Kung galing at galing lang. But, but the question is, no matter how good the logic, the reasoning, or the propaganda is, the question is, does it work? Eh, in the end, they're still part of the capitalist system, eh. Diba? And they're actually making the democratic system work for them. Nakapag-ipa-elect sila ng mga kongresista. Sasabihin pa ba nilang bulok ang sistema? Eh, pinananalo na nga nila. Tapos, yun, tama, sabi ni uh, Iko Cayetano, tapos mag-sit-in na hindi pabor sa kanila, paaalisin nila, that is correct. Para isa lang ang naririnig ng mga, ng mga taong ini-indoctrinate nila, walang tumutunggali. Diba? Walang, ano, walang opposition. Diba? Ayun, ah, yun naman pala, akala ninyo yung pressure cooker may problema yung audio ko. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hindi ko nasabi sa inyo. Minsan naman, galit na galit. Ano yan, may problema, grounded yata yung mic nyo. Hindi po naririnig nyo po yung ano, <laughs> yung electric fan ko. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway, so the, do you see the, the G, aral yung mga sinasabi ni General Parlade. So yung sinasabi niya, he's careful with his words, ha? Huh? Hindi niya sinabi na, ano, komunista yung kapatid ni Angel Loxin. He said that she participated in the underground, that, ano, tumatawid siya into Gabriela, and in a very, very subtle way, informed us that they may be some members of Gabriela that are aiding and abetting the revolution or the rebellion which means they are either uh, accessories, accomplices, or co-conspirators in the crime of rebellion. Okay. Ngayon, yung isang ano, ah, argumento ng kabila, binasag na natin yun. 
Ha? If you have evidence, why don't you file a case? Bakit kayo magdidikta kung kailan ako mag-file ng kaso? Eh makakapuntos pa ako sa propaganda dito. ba? Diba? And there is nothing wrong with co conducting propaganda. The state tries to protect itself. Isa, foremost sa karapatan ng Estado ang protektahan yung existence nito. Kaya may martial law. Kaya may, ano, kaya krimen ang rebelyon. Ang kudeta, yung mga attempts na buwagin yung ating sistema in illegal, using illegal means, are punishable with swift action. Okay? And the whole might of the state is born upon them. That's why we use the AFP and not the PNP. Kailangan lakas. Lakas sa lakas. When you threaten the existence of the state. Diba? And the use of propaganda is part of that use of force. It's the force of words. Kasi, alam nga naman yung nagsasalita lang sila dyan, babarilin natin. Ay, hindi, hindi patas yung laban na yan. Bawal yan. Okay? Tayo yung matatalo dyan. Kahit mapatay natin silang lahat, talo tayo. Kasi, <laughs> di ba? Eh, Kung baga, the person, ang sab kasabihan sa Chinese, the person who first runs out of words loses. Okay? Kaya yung pagka, nagde-debate kayo, nagde-debate-debate, yung unang manuntok, talo yun. And, eh, no matter what, talo yun. Di ba? <laughs> so, um, why were we talking about this? Para alam natin kung paano tayo nililindang ng kabila. Okay? Yung mga ganyan, yung mga, that's a trap eh. File your case. Why don't you file your case? Sinasabi yan sa ibang tao. Kunwari, itong taong to, libel siya ng libel sa akin. Libel na libel na libel. O sige. Pero kung to yan, at isang tao lang ako, you are not up against an entire cause or an entire organization. Kasuhan mo ako. Game. Pag hindi mo ako kinakasuhan, wala kang credibility. But if it is the AFP against enemies of the state, then we have all the right to conduct propaganda prior to filing our cases. Diba? Bakit? This propaganda might prevent people from being recruited. This might prevent our kids from readily listening to the other side. It might help our students listen to us first or listen to uh, this side first or listen to other opinions para hindi nang iikot ang ulo nila. It is necessary. Ano yung sinabi natin, di ba? Get that information out there. Ilabas ng ilabas ng ilabas ng ilabas. Even if they don't answer, even if they don't engage us in debate, that information is out there so that if they read it, or when they read it, as they are surely going to read it, then we, we have that one chance to change their minds. Di ba? <laughs> Warfare isn't just by bullets. Even debate, you don't win debate by making, by crushing them. You win the debate by convincing them. At pag masyado tayong dogmatic, masyado tayong nakikipag-away, di ba, hindi tayo nakadagdag ng kakampi, pinahiya lang natin sila. Sometimes we win that way, and sometimes we win by convincing them to cross into the dark side. Dito sa atin. <laughs> How do you defeat an enemy? The first is by crushing them, and the second is by making him come over to your side. Yeah. Diba? Many ways. Lesson ni General Parlade yan. Pwede tayong magbarilan sa gubat, pwede tayong magdiskurso sa social media. Pwede rin kaming pumasok at dapat pinapapasok ang military to conduct the, the alternative. Kung nakakapasok yung mga uh, uh, recruiters, ng mga na, ng NPA or ng CPP or any of these above ground groups then necessarily state forces should also be there pero the, the AFP and the PNP they have to step up their game and they did NPF LCAC is, is an example of stepping up their game dati kasi pagka nakinig ka sa official kukunti lang yung mga military officers no, na matatas, magaling, articulate magagaling sila sa barilan pero ngayon they're producing a new breed of officers na magagaling na, narunong na makipagdiskurso sa ulado na rin yung mga doktrina at kayang tapatan yung diskurso ng kabila at yan, yan na po ang kinatatakutan nila kaya they're on the run kaya yung UP Student Council, the only thing they could think of was say, ay, instrumento ng military yung mga magulang <laughs> o yung kabila di ba? I'm surprised na ang hirit lang nila is ano Red tagging, red tagging, pero hindi nila, pansinin mo, anybody sa kanila, even the smartest of them, hindi nila ma-explain kung bakit mali yun. 
alam na natin hindi criminal pero hindi na rin nila ma-explain kasi guilt by association oh guilt by association pag ang ina-allege na natin pag ang tinitignan na natin is there is a conspiracy among these uh, legal fronts and the illegal fronts di ba there is ano there are accessories or accomplices to the crime hindi na po yan guilt by association guilt by guilt <laughs> May audio po ako. Sorry, sir. May audio ako. Painis na, ha? Okay. Let's look at your questions. Nung nag-aaral, teka, 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 pa yung dalawang anak ko, sabi ni Ma'am Lenny, pero hindi siya Robredo, si Ma'am Lenny Laseste de La Paz. Nung nag-aaral pa yung dalawang anak ko dyan sa Maynila, sinasabihan ko na sila na don't engage in rallies, lalo na yung mga nagre-recruit against the government. Pag nalaman ko, nakita ko mismo, ay papahiyain ko in public at imumunod ko ako kanila sa semento. Kita nyo? Kaya sinasabi ko sa'yo, I guarantee you, mga estudyante, mas takot pa sila sa mga nanay nila kesa sa, ano, kesa sa military. Sa totoo lang. Kahit noon. Sa akin kasi, nagkataon yung tatay ko military, pero mas takot pa rin ako sa nanay ko. Uh, sabi ni Ma'am Evangeline Eslava, your audio is loud and clear here in Switzerland. Uh, sabi ni Cyrus Torion, bakit ayaw ni TP kay Badoy? You know, you have to trust TP na meron naman siyang dahilan. Um, hindi ko alam kung tama na po ito na panahon para iungkat uli yan. Pero kung titignan nyo, may history po kasi sila. Kahit naman kami dito sa Luminous, may history kami with Yusek Badoy. Pero ang ano natin dito, and part of this is a teaching moment, no? Na pagkatama naman yung tao, kahit kalaban natin yan, kailangan i-acknowledge natin pagtama sila. ba diba? Kailangan ganun. Uh, we may not like her. Pero tama yung ginawa niya dun sa makabayan block na, o oh, sige, denounce ninyo yung NPA. Ako mali yung denounce ninyo yung NPA. I-denounce ninyo yung acts ng NPA. Mas specific yun. ba diba? uh, So, it's okay for those people who don't like Badoy, like me, it's okay. Pero we also have to acknowledge pagtama siya. Uh, Diba? At ganun naman ang ginagawa ni TP. Ina-acknowledge niya. Pagtama naman si Badoy. Uh, parang, ano, uh, halimbawa, uh, I disagree the, with the opinion that uh, Secretary Andanar is doing a very good job. Pero, i-acknowledge ko na yung mga tao niya, they do a good job. Si Monqua Loping, Asik Chris Ablan, si, si Asik Marie, they do very good jobs. So, bakit, bakit natin eh, ano, ba, hindi natin lalahatin? I think that Sek Andadar can do more. Oh, he can do much more. But, hindi ako na ako masyadong makareklamo dahil magaling si, 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 si na Asik Chris, Asik Marie, si Monqua Loping, and in this instance, eh, Yusek Badoy. ba? Diba? So, we give credit where credit is due. Hindi tayo mamay marasonal, lalong-lalo na for good work. Diba? Uh, okay, so we, we, we don't have to like somebody who's doing a good job. <laughs> uh, sabi ni Glenn, ah, Leonardo, TP even acknowledged Lenny kapag tama ginagawa niya. Pero, it doesn't mean na bumaliktad si TP. That is true. That is true. Totoo yan. Uh, so, uh, yun yung ano, yun yung ano natin dyan. Um, credit where credit is due. Uh, ito, ito, ito. Uh, sabi ni Romel Mortel Punsalan, may nagreklamo sa Tulfo kanina na nire-recruit ng anak bayan ng anak niya at hinahanap niya for two years na mahigit. Kaso, wala man lang aksyon si Tulfo. Oy, oy, I don't always agree with the actions of the Tulfo guys, Tulfo men. Pero, the question is, ano ba ang ini-expect natin sa kanilang gawin? Uh, 
kapag adult na yung anak, tignan niya yung nangyari. Ang example dito, si Ma'am Relisa, si Ma'am Isay, Lucena, nanay ni AJ. O, nagpa-file siya ng petition na habeas corpus sa Supreme Court. Ang sabi niya, yung anak bayan, ni-recruit yung anak niya at ayaw isoli sa pamilya. O, dito na yung nasa pressure cooker. Uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, de, pina, ano, pinatawag si AJ, pinatawag yung, ano, yung anak bayan, and dininay yung petition for habeas corpus. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi adult na si AJ. She's over 18. Kusang loob siyang umakyat. Kung bata pa siya, kung under 18 siya, if she was 15, 16, 17 years old, bibigay ng Supreme Court yung habeas corpus. Hindi po binigay. Dahil yan ang batas. So, Anong gagawin? Anong ina-expect natin kina Tulfo? What can they do? Kung kusang loob umakyat si AJ. Gaya nga na sinasabi natin eh. Alam niyo sa US, naging problema yan. Naging problema yan sa mga kulto. Yung mga pong ano, mga ano, kulto na binibrainwash yung mga bata. Tapos sasali sila sa kulto. Tapos bibigay nila lahat ng ari-arian nila. Tapos alis na sila sa pamilya nila. Ang ginagawa ng parents, kasi hindi nila mahabias corpus hindi nila, there was no legal means to get them back kapag adult na yung bata, yung anak nila. So, nag-hire sila ng, kiki, ng private na tao, na private detective or whatever, what we call the deprogrammers, ha-hire sila ng ganun, kikidnapin yung bata, is a psychological deprogramming yung bata. Ha? Psychological deprogramming. Ganun po ang kailangan gawin dito. But if you kidnap her, then, ano pa rin yun? Krimen pa rin yun. ba? Diba? So, it's really not fair kung i-expect ninyo na may action yung mga tool for because within the bounds of the law, there's not much that they can actually do. Okay. May nagtatanong ano opinion kay Ka-Eric. Kilala po natin si Ka-Eric. We've already met bago pa siya lumabas. In fact, nag-usap kami bago siya lumabas kasi nga pinaghahandaan niya itong revelations niya. So, Anong mga sinabi ni Ka Eric? Well, uh, nilabas na ni Ka Eric na membro siya, uh, ranking member siya ng uh, hierarchy ng NPA at ang binubunyag na ay nilalabas niya uh, yung recruitment methods, yung link-ups between the organizations, yung mga tinatawag natin na legitimate fronts at saka yung underground, yung insurgency. At ngayon, well, uh, I want him to, to talk as much as possible nang hindi namin siya masyadong inaantala o ginugulo. Kasi ini-expect ko na sisiraan siya ng kabila at nag-umpisa na nga. Uh, nag-umpisa na nga ang siraan. Expected yan dahil nakapunto si Ka Eric dito sa ano, dito sa sa, sa mga komunista, sa, sa mga rebelde nakapuntos siya because this is personal knowledge on his part at hindi ako magdududang may hawak siya na matibay-tibay na ebidensya so it is very very dangerous for Ka Eric's testimony to remain unchallenged o yung ano, mga binunyag niya na hindi itcha challenge since mahirap i-challenge yung ibang mga pinagsasabi niya without actually revealing the, the operations of these underground and above ground organizations sisiraan nila si Ka Eric. So, yan po ang mabantayan natin. We have to be careful na pinakikinggan natin si Ka Eric sa sinabi niya, pero pag na-mersonal yung kabila, ay wag na natin pansinin yan. Bakit? Ganito yan. Kasabihin nila, maraming lalabas dyan and I'm not sure if all of them are going to be true or even if they are true, so what? Ganito yan. When you testify, You testify based on your personal knowledge.